Hey guys, um, I'm gonna make a short video here. I just kind of, this one's a little still raw. Um, it's about a dream I had last night. So, um, I was gonna kind of share some of the stuff I wrote down and it's just, I really need you guys' help too. Um, there's a lot to this. So I'm only gonna kind of touch parts of it. But this dream, the dream I had, it was about is this is what this is what I saw. Jesus was sitting on a large rock on a cliff of, of the mountain overlooking the land. Then he spoke and said, Are we going to live our life full of sin? Or turn and pray, entering in to my grace and glory set before you. Then he dealt, dealt with me that 5 a.m. He wants us to have a time of prayer as a nation. As a people. It took me to, of course, everybody knows this one, but 2 Chronicles 7.14. But if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then we'll hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will hear their land. But 15, now my eyes shall be opened and my ears attuned unto the prayer that is made in this place. <clears throat> so, so I'm, so what I'm throwing out there, guys, it's time to have a 5 a.m. prayer meeting as a nation, as a people. It doesn't have to be corporate prayer. And honestly, guys, that's part of it. I get it. But the bigger part of it is your own personal prayer. Because when we all come together, if we follow the Holy Ghost on fire for him, it becomes a forest fire. Yes, I get it. A city set upon a hill in corporate prayer. But a lot of it, because people haven't been praying in their secret place, is just a show. If there's not lights, cameras, action, and some kind of stuff, whether it be a band or a, just some showboat and preaching stuff that goes on. Entertainment, guys. But when you really get in prayer, and so that's why that 5, 5 a.m. is real important. So then I woke up this morning. And I was laying there and I was just kind of talking to the Lord about this and kind of, okay, you know, processing a little bit and seeing what's the day's going to bring, what's going on and how I should put this, you know, what I should do with this. And I laid there for a few minutes. I got up and came out to make coffee and looked at the clock. It was 5.08. So I had woke up at 5. The Lord woke me up at 5. And I was just laying there kind of procrastinating a little bit, probably not getting up when I probably should have, but I'm just kind of waking up, but it was five. Then he was dealing with me about Solomon, you know, built the temple and the house and house of prayer. But we're his house, guys. We're his temple. He wants a place to dwell in, and that's us. Acts 7. Sol but Solomon built him a house. Howbeit the highest dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool, and the earth is my footstool. What house will you build me, saith the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hand made all these things? And then he took me to, um, when he asked Peter, Peter, who do men say that I am? The revelation, son of the living God, Christ. And upon this rock, and then you read the other parts about it, that rock, that we built that house. If we build our house upon a rock, upon that solid rock, when the storms come, what's he talking about? A house, a dwelling place. It's us, guys. He wants to meet us at five in the morning. We're his house. 
or his place of refuge. Doesn't need the ark anymore, honestly. I'm not trying to mix that up. We're the ark, guys. In this last day, that was the whole point of Jesus, to live in us. The Holy Ghost seals the deal. So that's why I said there's more to it than that. So, I wanted to share something that a dear friend of ours also wrote on Facebook. It was, um, we as Christians in America must model it and on our knees in prayer for the lost and for our country, no matter who is pre the president is. I mean, he wants to destroy our country because it's the largest beacon of freedom and democracy in the entire world. We are Christians responsible for this country, remaining a Christian nation. I'm glad at least our president asking Americans to exemplify and teach teaching as Christ is better than having our own president that wouldn't even say this. Having a president who wouldn't even say this. God, who governs us as Christians, God's word says when the righteous thrive and people rejoice, when the wicked rule, the people groan. Proverbs 29.2 we, the people of the United States, must thrive and we must act on righteousness. That's our responsibility as Christians, to be righteous in Christ. We don't want the wicked will. If we don't, the wicked will rule and the, and the people will groan. So, guys, there's other people seeing the same thing, but what I'm doing is I'm telling you guys it's time to call a prayer meeting. And it's at 5 in the morning. So let's all do it, five in the morning. I don't know why the Lord highlighted that, but he did. And it's very important and imperative that we as a nation get on our knees and turn to him. You know, that scripture, the second Chronicles 7, 14, this one's free, I guess. But the humble peace is hard for us to do as a nation, as a people. Because we're Americans, we got a lot of pride. That's one of the. That's one of the. That's why the storm's coming to America. It's gonna knock our pride down, guys. This one's free. Told me a while back. I'm still processing this message because it's like he said it's time for people in the ministry to get over themselves. I'm like, man, God, that kind of hurts. Because my wife and I do a homeless shelter ministry. I minister on the streets all the time. I minister wherever I go. My, he's told me my platform was wherever I go. And it seemed to be 7-Eleven a lot. But it's just all over the place, guys. Bookstores and just different people. It's just wherever. So it hurt. And then he said, go to Second Chronicles seven fourteen. Imagine if we humbled ourselves and really prayed and really saw his face. So I'm telling you, it's five in the morning, guys. That's what he's telling telling me in a dream to tell you guys, and that's why I put this video out. I wanted to wait because it kind of seemed a little messy, and it probably is, but there's so much depth to it that I needed to get it out, for one, because I need your input. That's two. So it's twofold. But it's all of us guys, it has nothing to do with me. I gotta do the same thing. It, it, it's, he wants us to do it as a body. It's not gonna be a revival, guys. It's not gonna be a move. It's gonna be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, of the fire, of the new wine, of the Joel's army. We're all looking for a place in the building and a, something going on over here, over there, or over. It's right here, guys. It's gonna happen at five in the morning, guys. In your own secret place, guys. That's what I'm telling you. And then we're gonna bring it all together. And then we're gonna be that great army of Joel. Cause we're gonna have something of substance that we got at five in the morning, guys. So that's what I'm telling you. It's just time to pray as a nation, as a people. Cause there's so much at stake here and so much going on. <laughs> 
And, you know, I've heard, I've been, got saved in 1980, and I hear the Lord's coming any day, any time, and I still hear that, and it's blasted all over the internet right now. And it very well may be true, because I don't know, and neither do you. But for the people in the hospital that are dying right now with cancer and the old people that are dying in the nursing home and the people that are about to die and perish today and right now as we speak, he is coming. So, me and guys, people's lives are at stake and their souls are at stake and their eternity is at stake and where they're going to spend the rest of eternity is at stake. No more games, guys. Let's start really digging in. Let's get a little neology here at 5 in the morning. So anyhow, we love you guys. Um, just wanted to get that out there. Uh, goes along with a lot of my other messages. The last one I put out there about choice that I'm still a little over, over a little overwhelmed with what the Lord's doing with me right now. So it's But it's like, okay, God, it's going to get better. I promise. But right now, it's a little messy, guys. So just, you know, here it is. Not trying to be messy. I just got to get it out there. We love you guys. Um, you want to email me at Jesus is alive in America at gmail.com or you can go to Jesus is alive in America.com, blog with us, um, or look us up, Instagram, Facebook, and all that stuff. I don't even want to do any of that junk, but there it is. I'm out there and got to do it because the Lord told me to. Same with this YouTube. Um, I want to try to get my videos a little bit better other than just my lame face and bald head that needs a haircut. Love you guys. Uh, talk to you real soon. Um, let's start praying together at 5 in the morning, 5 a.m. Before you start your day, before anything else transpires, before your kids wake up, even your dog, whatever. It's still quiet. Still not traffic. Still not noise. People going to and fro to work. People are just barely getting up at 5 in the morning. Time of grace and glory. Not that we can sin and do whatever we want. It's actually the opposite. He wants to call us into his grace and glory. So we have to lay aside that every weight and sin it so silly beset us. That's why I put out that vision and that dream about the storm, because the Lord also told me that. And that's what the storm is going to come to do. Separate the men from the boys. The rubber's going to meet the road. <clears throat> and you're going to get it at 5 in the morning now is what I'm telling you guys. At 5 in the morning in your secret place, in your prayer closet, or your prayer chair, or wherever your special place is to pray, in your house, or in your apartment, or on your job, or wherever you go. But let's do this, guys. 5 a.m. prayer time. Love you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.